Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, on behalf of AccuStats Video Productions, it's my pleasure to welcome all of you to the 42nd U.S. Open Nine Ball Championship. We're here live in the AccuStats Arena at the beautiful Sheraton Norfolk Waterside Hotel, our most gracious hosts for the past three years. We're in day number five of our seven-day event. We're getting down to it right now, and we've got terrific matchup for you coming up momentarily. Before I introduce our players, I'd like to take another opportunity to recognize our three signature sponsors, Diamond Billiard Products for providing this gorgeous Paragon table, Aramith Belgian Billiard Balls for our TV Pro Cup set and measle ball, and Simonis Cloth for providing the Tour Blue 860. Thank you all to those companies for their support of the US Open and their support of AccuStats and Professional Pool throughout the years. We also want to take another opportunity, because this one we can't say enough, and that's to thank all of you, our great, loyal, and dedicated fans that have so graciously supported the US Open for 42 years, and also for those of you right here ringside, thank you so very, very much for everybody for all you do. Thank you. Okay, here we go, winner's side action for you right now. Our first player is from Scotland. This gentleman is a former Kuwait nine ball open champion. He's formerly a Team Europe Moscone Cup member and looking to be one again in just the next couple of months. He's currently the number two ranked player in the world, ladies and gentlemen. He's sponsored by Mayuchi and by DigiQ by OB. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Eagle Eye, it's Jason Shaw. Thank you very much. His opponent representing the USA. He's also going to represent the USA on this year's Moscone Cup team. He'll be making his Moscone Cup debut and we're really proud of him for that accomplishment. He's also the reigning Derby City One Pocket Champion, sponsored by High Rock and Molinari. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Billy Thorpe. All right, here we go. One race to 11 to stay on the good side. At this time, I have the pleasure to send it to the booth to Mark Wilson and a very special guest, former US Open nine ball champion, Double J, Jeremy Jones. Here's what's happening, world-class pool from the 2017 US Open. The feature presentation will be something really terrific, Jason Shaw versus Billy Thorpe. Welcome everyone, Mark Wilson, and tonight we have one of my favorite color commentators, one of my favorite professional players, and one of my favorite human beings, Jeremy Jones. Jeremy, give us a couple opening thoughts here. Oh, well, i definitely got uh, what looks at the future of pool and two young men that uh, are already champions and great players. And, and really, I think it kind of goes back to a lot of these matches. I think they're going to be close. Um, but it, I think also the guy that gets that lead and gets comfortable with a few opening shots is, you know, about 60% to win the match. So we'll see how it uh, opens up for either Billy or Jason. I expect a great match, though. Just what you said about close, uh, both these guys got here by virtue of 11 to 10 wins. <laughs> Thorpe beat Beato here last night, 11-10, and then uh, Shaw beat Big Co. Here, 11-10. Yeah, well, that's one great thing about the U.S. Open. They always figure out, you know, especially towards the end of the tournament, but if both players are prepared or, or in any match, they're almost always going to be close matches. You're talking about 11-6, 11-7, and greater uh, and closer because they make the conditions to where it's tough to really string a lot of racks, whether it be the tables are a little tighter, the conditions are a little tougher, the break rules are a little tougher, so... Uh, you know, like I said, unless somebody's out of stroke or really, really not performing, yeah. you're going to see a lot of close matches. You know, the person that wins the first rack goes on mathematically to win 56% 50, of the time. Thorpe has won the leg. He'll be leading off, breaking three ball on the wing. Yeah, and besides playing great, I think uh, both these guys are in the position they're in uh, because they've been some of the most successful breakers in the tournament from what I've seen. Well, the one found the side. The wing ball hit the corner. And Billy has a long straight-in two ball here. Yeah, and he's got a piece of the seven. I'm not sure. It's real close if the seven's got a piece of him here. If it doesn't, he'll definitely be shooting. But it, even if it does, you may see him elevate just because it's just a sliver there, Mark. It's one of these things where he needs to stun forward 
Okay. I don't think he can roll it forward unless he wants to play the, the four in the corner past the five ball. Yeah, in between the six and the eight, and that may be the shot because you get a little more, um, even the four, eight, uh, but you get a little more convincing pattern on the two ball, you know, path mm -hmm. on the two ball, excuse me. He's got issues here, though, because he's not going to be able to get close to the five, shooting the four straight in. <laughs> Billy, Billy the kid, 20 years old or 21 years old, I guess, be figured that yeah, and uh, Jason uh, just turning 29, so you're just, this is the 42nd annual uh, U.S. Open, but we just have 50 years of, uh, of uh, on the table here tonight, so that's pretty impressive. We're at, oh, and that's the shot on this newer, slick uh, TV table, you might say, that it can really get away from you when you go to hitting the ball a little hard. Well, he lost his timing. It was a very quick transition from backswing to forswing there. Yeah, you can that, see he missed it by a good bit. Yeah, and that's the one that I, I discuss with most people. That's about 95% the mistake for most people, and that means all levels. So, yeah, absolutely right. I'm going to test her here to get started because it's kind of off angle. He can't really punch over without flirting the scratch. So you might see him just dead roll this in. He likes to shoot these usually with a little speed. Oh, great hit there. <laughs> he glides it in there just from downtown. Yeah, and on the slick felt, it's so easy because you're hitting a little bit of a downward stroke there. It's so easy if you just overhit it, go right off in the side pocket with the cue ball. So that he made that look real easy. And just as uh, Kenny opened up the our match here this evening, you're looking at two guys that may fa face off uh, in Vegas here come December. Yeah, no doubt going to happen he's going to draw oh, i'm surprised he didn't try to draw into the eight there i thought he could just hold his ball and just maybe <laughs> nudge the eight a little bit now he's gotten a little flat this is good position for jason shaw who averages two feet further away from the object balls than the next best player in the tournament yeah but <laughs> he just, and this will it'll cost him sometimes like in this he that yeah. could that could have gotten a little more hairy than it did and that's going to draw the attention of kenny here being a little close He's such a funny guy. He's so relaxed. How can you play a match like that? It's like he's in a rocking chair while he's playing. Well, quite honestly, last year I had a pretty good run here in the tournament, uh, and that was mainly my one thing I said to myself the entire tournament was just, hey, if you can play relaxed, you're going to have an edge. Yeah. You know? So these guys do it. These younger guys do it a little easier, of course. Jason Shaw punishes Billy Thorpe's quick transition from backswing to forest swing. Quickly grabs the lead, one game to zero. Race to 11. Break box, three-point rule in effect. Winner break format. Nine balls racked on the spot with a template. Yeah, you can't, uh, and it's not often that this comes up, but at the U.S. Open, it's almost always the guy who wins the tournament really played the best pool that week overall. Mm -hmm. You know, you'll have some tournaments where you may not think that the person necessarily played the best that week, just maybe a few rolls, or maybe the conditions were a little easier, maybe, to where it alluded to maybe just a little bit of a break and run out fest. But but these guys here, they're still break and run out a lot. Oh, boy. 30%. This will be invaluable experience for Billy Thorpe moving forward, though. Yeah, but that's on the back burner for him right now. Right. Eight ball on the wing. Shaw breaking from the right side of the box as he faces the table. <laughs> One and the eight. Here comes the nine. Uh, oh. Well, if he doesn't get <laughs> elevated, he's definitely banking the two on the nine here. But he's elevated, and that makes it real hairy because we're playing all ball fouls here. Yeah, and the nine's ha hanging. It's just far enough out of the pocket that it's precarious. Yeah, but then where do you roll out to? No, he's... You, I mean, he's, you, could, you could roll out on and make the nine and leave the guy, like, a little funny there. But if he's trying to feather this and put him behind the three, that's touchy. I'll tell you, I might have to move the nine here. I might have to make er Billy earn this win from here. Yeah, you don't want to give one right back. No, not after a miss, especially. Never you do, but I mean, you know. Right, you want to punish him and make him earn his opportunities. Right, even if it's a few ticky ticky. Okay, oh. he was trying to get at it. 
he fouled. And that's another reason why I didn't like going hard at the ball being that was he was close to that seven ball that, you know, you think you can cue it perfectly, but yeah, when you go to swing in the cue hard, things can happen. Well, here's the cheap win right back. And Billy Thorpe takes advantage of ball in hand. Ties the score at one apiece. Yeah, and people don't realize the huge emotional swings in our game. Like, it looked like the nine's going in on the break. It looks like he's going to have a nice, clean bank at the mm -hmm. two-nine. Then the seven comes around and gets him elevated, and he fouls. You know, I wonder if uh, what factored into that is that if Jason pushes out by pocketing the nine and leaving a bank, Billy is, I mean, he, he looks at those banks as straight ends. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I, I agree, but. I agree with you on, on that. There's a, not a lot of places you can roll out on Billy uh, to where he's going to pass it up uh, if it's, there's some type of offensive shot. Last night in his match, he had two of those straight back banks, and they were you were kind of exposed. It was kind of like you're betting the game on this. That wisdom right in like a straight in. Right. Yeah, just effortless. He's a fearless shot maker. Billy the Kid. Fan favorite. He comes to Lindenwood, and naturally he's the same age as all my college kids, and and they just adore him because he's them, and and yet yeah, he can beat anybody in the world, you know. So, oh yeah, he's major cool. Yeah, definitely one of the uh, futures of of the sport, not only worldwide but mainly right here in America. Great attitude as well. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, these are two guys that keep themselves physically fit, so ready to play as well as they can at all times. 1-1, one, one, six ball on the wing. One ball found the pocket. And he's going to have a legal break as the eight ball touches the head string. That's all it's required. Doesn't have to pass it, just has to touch it. And he's going to have a long tester after an early miss on the five in game one. So this is kind of like a shot he has to hit hard again, but if when he overhits it, that's when you'll hit it chunky on this new felt hitting it with the low outside. So if he hits it clean, uh, I've got to believe he's drawn past it. If he hits it clean, it's not going to be as hard a strike as you would think. Oh, he went for the long shot. Okay, I can't blame him. No, good decision. Minimize unforced errors at this point. You know, it's kind of like, Getting back to continuing your run, too. You realize a three is just really not that hard a shot from there. Mm hmm Still, though, you gotta, you got to feel good if you're in Billy's corner. That shot right there was just about as tough, hitting it real clean and, again, not scratching in the side. Okay, that's going to catch. Oh, no, nice shot. Was able to avoid hitting the six ball. That helped dramatically. If he's gotten kind of straight, you may see a five six combination here or something that may allude to like a bank and a safety on the five. You know, like fall down below the five and maybe get a cut on it in the side or is he trying to pound this mark? No, I don't think so. Well he never went and looked at the combo, so yeah, he's trying he was to pound it. And that's the one I was talking about, the slick table. You really have to be accurate if you go to hitting the ball hard. The the, the grab uh, yeah. from cue ball to object ball just isn't there. And the pockets are unforgiving. Yeah, this is a diamond. At that velocity, yeah, soft this, speed there. Yeah, this is a diamond, so I think this is cuttable. Huh? No, he's banking it. All right, nice shot. Uh, you'll definitely probably see short side on the seven, right? Playing the seven past the... Doesn't have to, but I, I should certainly like that better. Plays easier. You have a yeah. bigger margin of error to get on it. And for these guys shooting the ball past the side, that's something they practice every day. I mean, really, to play the game correctly, Yeah. you need, really need to... You know, and the seven's a solid inch from the rail, so that it's not. if it's frozen, then that's a different deal. But still, even whatever, if you're trying to improve, that's a shot you have to have, like, total confidence in because to really play top-shelf pool is a shot you can't really uh, pass up on a lot of times. Right. you got to be able to shoot it a bunch of different ways. And this is what he'll do a lot of times where I'll stay away from that. Like, I think he could have punched it out and got a 
pretty close to the same, maybe. Yeah, right, right. Is it going three rails here? Wow. wow. This is the funniest angle for three rails. Half thick, half thin. Okay, he's just going back and wow. forth. Yeah. It's, it's silly when you have that type of power power to risk missing to get a little bit closer. Yeah, continue to run, just, yeah. Well, he's not going to miss this hardly ever. He, I've seen him overpower a 10-foot table. This is the Jason Shaw bar table right, right. here, the nine-footer. And he smooths the nine ball home. Takes another lead, one by one game, two to one. And look, he's working on their breakdown on table number nine. Who would you guess? Yeah, I was going to say that actually in the beginning of, of rack <laughs> one. He was actually on table 11 whenever we started it here uh, in this match. He's, he's moved now. I really admire his work ethic. And, you know, he'll sit in the arena here, and I always notice the pro players that sit. And every time one of the guys breaks, he gets up in his chair and really scouts what's mm -hmm. going on on that table. I mean, it's consummate professional. That's what I did to help me here this week is uh, I was at the pool room, uh, and I watched, uh, well, I believe, is one of the Japanese players for about 45 minutes to an hour. I just watched him. He hit it so clean, the break. And it helped me for the most part through through the tournament. I was kind of lost before that. Yeah, it's a different style. The nine balls racked on the foot spot. And then there's the three-point rule, and everybody's using the cut break, and the cue ball's getting away from them. But nobody works harder on it than Shane Van Boning, and nobody's more successful. We watch him and just marvel because it's the wing ball and the one ball every time, and then something else sifts in. Yeah. And if he gets a shot, oh, he's going to hurt you. Yeah, well, with his wins here. It's definitely paid off, and you can tell nobody's been more successful just by those wins. He's played pretty great, too. Last night against Alcano, man, he made a lot of great outs. Mm -hmm. uh, so a lot of people think it's just that break, but you can forget about that. He can play, too. Oh, nine ball. The cue ball came back through. That counts. And Jason moves his beat over prior to all the balls coming to rest. Well, one thing I love about this is the variations you get. I mean, guys do make the same balls a lot, but they're not getting the same shots on the one and two mm -hmm. and all that, mm -hmm. you know. So right. Because it seems like just a little bit of speed makes all the difference with this cut break with the nine on the spot. Yeah. So Shane's got that speed dialed down. Um, he, he's not hitting him anywhere near as hard as he can, but he knows the sweet spot on the one ball to get the one to go on the side and the wing ball. Right. And you start making that regularly, and when you do it two hours every day, there's no one. He can show you where to hit it, and he can tell you what speed to hit it, but you can't hit it there unless you paid the price. Three to one. And this is a final sure. eight of the winners, so whoever, whoever wins this goes on to the final four, and whoever loses will be, uh, be back uh, with the final 12. Uh, players. Okay, Jason Shaw. Three, leading 3-1, breaking open-handed. Open bridge, I mean. Eight ball on the wing. Hmm, both eight ball and one ball rattled. Here comes the cue ball trying to Clipped the eight ball in, but failed. Dry break. I think he announced the illegal break. It may have been, because there's not many balls down table. I don't see Billy passing this up, though, and meaning I don't know what he's going to do exactly just yet, but I think he can cross the one over and come straight back down the table trying to get a hook. He could cross corner being offensive. I think he can shoot at it, cutting it in, but he's elevated over the eight. He's passing this. Now, this rule here, now there's no rollout. So when he passes on the illegal break, the reason why that is, he doesn't have the choice to roll out either. So now Jason has to has to shoot at the one somehow. And I wouldn't be surprised if he just knocks it right on in. Just shoots it right on in, comes across, and contacts the pink four for position on the two. We always say it's much easier to shoot at this when you have to as opposed to you have a choice. And he got a roll behind it. That's another thing. Kenny called a foul. Object ball foul. Second one in the match. Oh, we wow. haven't seen any. He rubbed the eight with the shaft. Wow. Now that's going to maybe play in his mind later on in a crucial situation, Mark. Yeah, that's good two point. times. And 
Now, now Billy's got to really work this out. He's got some traffic with that 356. And the eight's laying over the pocket to where the three ball combination, if he happened to get to where he needed to shoot that, that's not easy. What do you see? Anything on the three? Just, I think you play a safety pretty easy, but. If you have to. Yeah, but you know, all these guys are great players because they're so aggressive. Always looking to keep their opponent in the chair. Looks like maybe Billy can draw into it here or even play the three, draw and play the three in the same pocket he's playing the two. Yeah, but if he falls on the rail, he could have issues getting holding good for the four. Now, he did okay, but you'll notice he may be knocking the five down to the bottom rail, so he's got to really be uh, paying, yeah. paying attention to what's going on. That eight's helping him, though. He may get in a position later in the rack to where he may have to beard the eight. Or yeah, uh, Is he going forward here, like well, past these balls? Depending upon... Okay, that's how thick or I thin he gets. I thought that was very pocket. risky. I thought that was very, very risky going forward. I, I, I think I, I don't. I would have had to contain right there somehow. I don't know. Hmm. What do you think? <laughs> well, clearly now. Well, I, yeah, I know, but I'm saying like it's a bad roll to get hooked, maybe. But it, it certainly looked like there wasn't much to be accurate with as far as going through there. You make a great point, and then just even how the object ball, if it hits the thick or thin side of the side pocket, which is over two balls wide. That changes the departure angle from the six, so or the five ball, whichever it was that was next to it. Yeah, it was the five. Five and the six actually were pretty close. And that's the type of shot, you know, if you're in a, oh, he's going to get a roll here, but he's going to get pinned again unless this goes in. But <laughs> I was getting at is, you know, if you're in an action match, you, you're aggressive, you might go through there, but a tournament match, Mm -hmm. in, in really funny, mm -hmm. funny situations, you really have to guard against losing that game and others that might cost you right behind it. So now he's on a dead man's kick to where he kicks cross side, he's got to do that. But anything other than that, he could whiff it real easy or he could hit the bad side and scratch. So All right. All right. Really the kick you avoid here, but what else are you going to Oh, he is yeah. going to avoid it, and I don't blame him. If he can get a contact here, he's got the 6, 9, and 5 to drift a cue ball behind some kind of way. Looks pretty good. Yeah, real good shot. Oh, look at oh. this. Efren Reyes. Efren Reyes. Not quite. <laughs> wow. Good you may effort. have gotten a hook here, though. Yeah, and it's so deep in there. If he has to mass A to get to it, it's easy to scratch. Now, I think the three-rail kick is pretty good here. Going right in between the nine and six. I hate, I hate to say that, but it's hard for me to jump at that deep ball. Mm-hmm. Is he mass saying this? He's mass saying it. It's a tough table to mass say your ball. And uh, it's so deep. Wow, great what shot. a great hit. Great, great shot. Great hit with what control, too, right? Yeah. And yeah. now he's just got to pretty much stop his ball, maybe pinch it back an inch or two for the six. I just can't even imagine how much fun it must be to play pool with that type of confidence and firepower. Well, I think that's pretty pretty consistent with a lot of players these days in my mind that I true. watch. Yeah, true. That, that, but no one has the same firepower Jason Shaw does. No. It's the greatest shooter I've ever seen. Really? Oh, yeah. I mean, I got to think about it. He's up there, that's for sure. Straight shooter. And and really the funny ones, too. The, the ones that you got to hit with a little funny English or just like an in-between speed. It just really doesn't phase him too much. Nine balls in. Jason Shaw now has four. Billy Thorpe one. You know, just in the last couple of years, Jason's got his emotions in check. He's a much tougher opponent. He also has the defense and kicking game down much better. And what happened was, he's kind of like a major league pitcher, or no, a, a, a pro baseball pitcher that never learned to pitch but could just throw hard. And that works through high school, and you can overpower guys in college and even low minor leagues. You get to the big leagues and just bring it in there 101, they tattoo you. Yeah, and but that's uh, that's the beauty. That's what you want. Like I, I'm around some younger people, and, and the older people will tell them, oh, no, t you don't have to hit it that hard, or you don't have to do that, or whatever. And I'm like, no, don't teach them to hit it softer. I mean, let them build 
there's some strengths, you know, some power. You know what I'm right. saying? So what, what I'm referencing though is that he didn't have the other side of the game. He just right. he'd give you if it, he'd play one safe and that's it, and then you can have it, and then he just beat you the next three games with great shot making. Right, right. But that yeah. used to work, but not at this level. You got to have the the other kicking and safety side is what I'm saying. And he's Absolutely. matured. He's become much more. Even when things uh, happen to him, that he used to get really emotional and upset. Because you've seen him quit in matches before, you know, yeah. mentally at least, you know, where he just gets one stroke and well, yeah, that's just maturing with the, the his right. surroundings, you know. And it's so. made him, you know, three times tougher player to beat nowadays. Yeah, the same thing. Like, a, yeah, just, uh, but he's got all the tools. That's the key. Oh boy, does he! And ever. He's got a great brain for the game. I'll tell you that. Good sense of humor too. He's going to need the five to travel a piece, and I think it did. Does he have a shot? Though? No, he kind of. Hmm. Well, he can't really roll out to a long shot on the two either because of the uh, three being right there. Now is he just going straight to the jump? I think that's a mistake at four to one. I think you got to look around to see if I can again make Billy really earn it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, make him gunfight. Yeah, and I'm not really the sure of the spot. There's a couple kick kick shots down here below the rack, but those aren't great. Whew, tough. Well, after what he did here the other night, he spiked a jump shot in that was equally tough as this one with the whole match riding on it. He did it effortlessly. Uh, split the wicket, ran out, and then he made a straight back bank in the last rack. That was unbelievable, and he just bet the game on that. So he has no shortage of confidence, that's for sure. Yeah, I'm not sure what I would do. I'm, I could push through the six and push to the rail, up the rail. That's what I was looking at, this left side rail. What's that do for me? Maybe a hair more than that and make sure you freeze him. But other, I mean, I think that was the, his best rollout area. Mm -hmm. It looks like he already, he's just got to dice it in, but it's not an easy shot. He's got to hold the line on the cue ball well to go back and forth. I don't think the three passes the nine, so he's got to have the right speed to really get a shot. Yeah. I think his decision also displayed some of the maturity we're talking about because he's in a negative spot. I think he wins more games this way than he does jumping. Yeah. Well, you hate to give your opponent that chance, but you still have to make a decision as a coach because uh, you're not only a player, you have to coach your way through the rack. At right. times as well. So, and now he's got way the best of it, being able to thin this ball and run back up table using the three and the seven and possibly the nine. I wouldn't go all the way up here. I think all going all the way up gives a lot more chance to give up a piece of the ball. I would have just laid on the side, I think, and just made him kick at it. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not like he's not going to hit it probably, but he's right. still got to make a great shot to yeah. snooker you. You, you make a great point there, and that's where your one-pocket savvy comes in, and that's where he's he's prone to just want to go for distance and not think it fully through because he's not as savvy on that aspect yet. Well, yeah, that I think maybe in the in, and again it's tournament style. Like tournament style, you sometimes you just got to get the hook with having the jump cue in mind. Meaning you can't just put it somewhere where the guys can jump the ball in so easily. Now you got to be aware of mm -hmm. that. But a lot of times, you don't. You're not going to get the devastating hook, and these great players hit it most of the times, anyways. So you want to really make sure you get the hook. Yeah. He's looking to play this off the six, and he had a little two-way in mind there. I think there's some gaps though, Mark. And I think he fell right in one. Yep. Now you'll see him just come right in between the three seven here, I believe. This is called using your skills, knowing you're not going to overhit it. You're not going to hit it too thick and catch the seven. Just come straight up. Just like so. <laughs> a lot of, again, he just from distance made that just look so easy, and it wasn't. So. Not at all. No, to make the cue ball go there from that range. And didn't overhit it, didn't do anything, just real clean. Real smooth. Eagle eye. <laughs> he and was it, at the five. He's now mindful of these object ball fouls. And he's got a little bit of an angle. He'll just go to the rail and out. He doesn't want to get thin, too thin on the five with the six being there on the left side rail. So he won't back off this. He'll go through it and get to the rail and over. That's one thing Jason does so well is, again, you alluded to him learning the game more and, and containing himself and his motions and whatnot. But when he's right, as far as when he's really, you know, into playing, which is most of the time, don't get us wrong, but 
he really believes in the shot he's shooting. Mm -hmm. and, and when you have that, your execution, as great as his is, can allow for a little bit of a judgment error at times because your execution overcomes. I got to tell you something. You make a great point in that of all the guys I watch, he never shoots a shot with ambiguity or trepidation. He's totally committed to whatever it is, whether you like it or not. Right. And his success rate is astounding. And you see other guys that shoot balls that they're thinking, ah, maybe I shouldn't be doing this, and then it goes off, and sure enough, then they rattle it. Well, that's why, like, uh, I'm so much a believer this game's a sport because your gut is used a lot of times, you know. Mm -hmm. So especially when the heat's on, your brain, I wouldn't say it shuts down, but it's, it's almost like you almost tell yourself not to think too much. Right. You know, you, from experience, you say, oh, you're over thinking it. I've done that before, so. Yeah, you can't second guess yourself. Meanwhile, Jason played a tremendous four rail position shot on the to get on the eight. And he's cruising along now and uh he's got some major momentum going on and this is this match is in just right at the brink where it's in danger of getting out of hand. Yeah, well, Billy's been pretty successful on the break this this week. Obviously he couldn't have come this far without it. Uh, but so he's thinking to himself he's definitely still in it, but I agree that he may not have much to say so. Mm -hmm. or he may not have much say so about it. Excuse me. No, yeah, right now, Jason's completely shutting him down. Well, and just like really, you know, what won the game for Jason Shaw there was the decision to push out as opposed to take the jump on. And he might have won with a jump, but he well, did win yeah. with what he chose, so. He's not just accurate. He's got power that's just un, un uh, recognized by most people. You wouldn't expect him to have that type of power in his game. You expect it from Larry Neville. No, he's got... Uh, Effortless power. Oh, he's got great power. Timing. His timing's so good. Tempo. No, it wasn't. The last break wasn't the one. It didn't explode like the first few, but uh, I wouldn't be too worried about it if I was Jason. I would just stick to what I'm doing here, right? Well, oh, he's been having great success every time he's been on this table from here. I like this. He didn't like his alignment. Get up. Look at the eye shifts right here. Eye shift, eye shift, lock in. Aiming on the break is super important. There yeah. goes the nine again. <laughs> the cue ball keeps clipping that nine towards the side pocket. And this is his specialty. We'll see. <laughs> yep. This is the type of shot, too. Like, he can hold his ball to the left side from this distance with not much problem. Now, he may miss, but, and I'm not sure he'll even go for that. He may try and come across and maybe bump the three or, or fall on the three in the side. Mm -hmm. But if he needed to, he like the, you'll see the four is covering the three up. So, as far as a combination, he could go forward with top English, but the way he plays, I would just make sure I would do whatever I can that gives me the best chance to make it because he can make anything on the three, anyways. Yeah, that's whatever. what I was saying. Come oh, across whatever. for the side or whatever. <laughs> Great shot. <laughs> How could you not love watching this guy? He's so much fun, makes it look so easy. Yeah, if you don't enjoy this, there's something wrong with you. And you know what makes it more compelling is when you know the guys and their personalities and everything. And not only is it a great, you know, artistic pool, but then you know the guy that's funny or the guy struggling and needs to win. All that thing makes much more interesting watching. And you would have privy knowledge to all that with these guys because you're around them all the time. Oh, no. Jason's a real fun guy to be around. Always uh, laughing and joking. Mm-hmm. You know, he's... uh. He's fun, just a funny guy. He's a good guy. I like him. He's just going to come one rail towards the nine here, I think. No reason to do anything extra. Well, that's going to be a pretty smooth break and run out. So now, well, from winning the game on that push out decision, he's cost uh, Billy Thorpe two. Just really kind of a 
probably a poor decision by Jason for Billy to get his only win with a 2-9 combination with ball in hand. I, yeah. If, yeah. I think if he would have rolled out there, he would have had a good shot, a better shot at winning that game as well. Good point. Still a pretty pretty heavy deficit after seven games. And particularly when the guy is not prone to miss many balls. So you're not going to get many unforced opportunities, and the unforced errors and opportunities that you're going to have to make your opportunities. Oh, look at there. 952 out of a possible thousand. He's only made two errors, pocketed 40 balls. Yeah, and uh, some of the degree of difficulty uh, that he made look effortless. I mean, just effortlessly made these balls. Uh, yeah. That number should be higher if it went by that. So. Yeah, you and I are very generous graders. Pat is like the Nazi. Oh, grader. he is? Yeah, I, but he applies it uniformly, so we give him a break on that. Well, yeah. I'm compassionate, though. Sometimes it's kind of a two-way shot or something. I understand. Well, it was yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, if there's some type of rules to it, I believe in the cut-and-dry rules. That's why I do like the all-ball fouls we're playing here. Oh, like I, if you're at the table and the ball yeah. moves, if, if you're addressed to the table and the ball moves, it's a foul. You know, so. Okay. One ball went in. Got two pass, and he's just two got trapped down here a little bit, so you're not going to see an offensive play here, I don't believe. You never no. know, though. No, you don't with him. See? Now, can he bank the two back under the four and use the four and the nine to, like, cover or maybe maybe chip the two and run the cue ball? I think that it's close. Because he's left-handed, I think he'll play safe. But if this was on the other side of the table, it would not surprise me to see him go after it. In what way? A cut? Because he's left-handed. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he's left-handed. Well, if you look yeah. at the table and not the monitor, I think you could see it's a little dicey on the cut. But that's the shot I liked right there. He hit it with a pretty good speed, too, and he had a couple different ways to play it. And that's the pro shot. Like, you'll yeah. learn from a lot of ways that I never even knew until I started. I knew it a little bit, but I never knew it that great until I started playing pro tournaments. And that's yeah. one of the things you were talking about, him learning. Yep. you got to be around the top players in the world to learn a lot of little situations that uh, – that you take what looks like a little of the worst of it and turn it into a little of the best of it. Now, he shouldn't kick hard at this. He can two real edge this and drift and use the four like that. Is he you got it. Wow. Yeah, it just barely rolled over to it. It looked like what a great shot that yeah, nice was. Yeah, nice speed. <laughs> Jason disappointed that he didn't get ball in hand. It looked like to me... Uh, it, it definitely got, it looked like it wasn't going to get to the rail. And then all of a sudden it, it it got to it. It looked like to me now, another one you want to hit with this with like a medium. You don't want to crush it, lose accuracy. Wow. <laughs> oh, wow. no. Oh, right now it's all Jason Shaw. And another one he's going to come with. But again, he's so in tune with this table. You'll see he won't over hit this going three rails uh, with top inside. That's the key to these dry tables, these TV tables, is just don't kill the ball. Well, I, I think he's going to just center ball it just come straight across. I know. Really? He's, it, he's looks so like he'll, it looks like he'll fall too 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 much downward. Now, is he hitting down, and now if he hits downward on the ball and comes straight across, that's one thing. But I don't think he can do that with just top. No, I'm saying center, you know, it's like just below center, just this shot. Yeah, yeah. he's so good at that shot, yeah. <laughs> He really got a little unlucky if the five didn't go in the corner. He, he's okay, though. He can draw back for the side. This shot for him is just like you or I were two feet closer to it. I'm telling you, it's just the way it is with him. And that's right where we would, we would have placed the cue ball with two feet closer. It's not a problem for him to get it there. Well, just a couple of weeks ago, I was in Elizabeth City, North Carolina, for a Essentially kind of a warm-up event for the U.S. Open. Really nice 32-man field event, the great Dismal Swamp, Swamp Classic. And uh, mm -hmm. he just stole the tournament from Dennis Ocoyo in the finals. Dennis had him just dead buried without really many, either one of them making a mistake, and he just run out from everywhere the last five racks. Just what you said. He had to be concerned about the nine ball now. Ops Falls has certainly got his attention. And when he 
he's not dropping down on the ball extremely fast, it's like he never misses. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. if when he starts dropping down on the ball fast from shot to shot, you'll see a, a miss. And I've seen him on ones like these, the more full, longer shots. But when he takes his time, it's like they're hangers. Great, great shot there, too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Pretty to watch. Seven one is our score now. It's the Jason Shaw show. Well, you know, Billy will tell you himself he's had a couple misses. Uh, they weren't easy shots to lose some of these games, but then some of them were just taken right away from him by Jason. Right there, yep. a brilliant kick safety uh, by really a nice shot by Jason to open up and then a brilliant uh, safety on the kick shot. And then Jason just long rail kicking it right, oh, which is perfect. Right here, yeah. He, and then a great shot on the three. That's why I say he makes things happen from nothing. He, he creates his own opportunities. You don't have to give him one. He'll just take care of it himself. And if he, if you, if he blows a couple of them along the way, it doesn't matter because later on he's going to overpower you with that. That's going to start happening. Right. Yeah, he's got that little extra dimension that you don't see. It's very uncommon. And this is really, I mean, both guys, uh, you know, tonight so far it hadn't been like Billy's not in love with being right here right now, right now, as we speak, but one shot could change that. Uh, but both these guys really, you know, you look at Jason and he's really always looking for this type of atmosphere. This is the atmosphere. This is the setting that he wants to play under. Mm -hmm. and again, you won't see much change here, breaking from what would be the left side of the table. But if you're looking at your uh, your monitor, uh, his right, with an open hand bridge, seven on the wing. One found the side pocket. I don't know if it was the wing ball, but something went in the corner. And I'll tell you, he's just shavings away from being being able to see this <laughs> yeah. two ball. Just He may be able to level curve at this ball, but it really doesn't offer much. Uh, really tough rollout situation, though. Well, he's, <laughs> he's aggressive, but going around the table. He may, like, get, he may be elevating here. He may be elevating. He's curving, soft curving at it. He's really going to fall by the six for position on the three if he does make it. So I don't know. Where do you roll out to? Though? Yeah, like he may end up forcing himself to play a jump shot just because he's, he's not in love with the. He doesn't want to leave Billy a bank. I might play the two into the four with the jump here and maybe send the cue ball at the eight. Um, I think he's going to try to cut it in the pocket and have the cue ball huh? hit the six and come across. I think he'll go right in between them, maybe. He may be hopping in the air, though, so we'll see. Can't say he's an underdog, though, right? No, I would be afraid to him shoot it. Nope. He overcut it. Now he's got to rely on a backdoor safety, which it looks like he's going to get. Yeah, and a real awkward one, too. This yep. isn't this isn't any kind of easy. He can't just clip the two easily and go by the six and get a snooker. He's going to have to play the two into the six and move the cue ball behind the four. Like play the two into the inside of the six where the two goes across and bring the cue ball back it's, behind the four. Yeah, it's so ugly, though. Sometimes I like to draw at the eight from here and try to generate some offense. I might, but you're going to be pinned on the back and the two's coming up. It might go cross side. Maybe. True story. True story. Yeah, it's it's tough. But it's super tough. You get tired. You're, you're down 7-1 and haven't I had agree, much to shoot at. And then playing safe and then Jason kicks it. I really think the drift back behind the 4-5 and let the 2 come across the table. It would be unlucky if the 2 goes in the side. See, like yep. so. Needs to make sure he hits it, though. Boy, that's a good shot. Yeah. Great speed. Great shot. And really uh, really uh, showing a lot of maturity at a young age, knowing he's down 7-1. to one, But he's still going to have to produce a good shot to get started. So, But that was a great shot there. And that yeah. was... he. He that, didn't create an extra unforced error, and like you said, it's not likely he was going to get a shot on the two, even if he succeeded in making the eight. Well, so, that, that'll show you his young one-pocket skills there, Mark. What did that look like, that yeah, last shot? Yeah. Oh, really the first error, uh, first big error anyway. Like, I don't even call it an error. Pat does. I told you he's a 
statistic Nazi. I'm, <laughs> I'm very lenient. He, that was a tough shot to hit. He did it. Come on now. Um, one thing Billy's got to realize, and I think he's gotten even better here in the last year or so, is like right here in this situation, it's going to be a long road to hoe to come back here. So you got to pace yourself and don't get in too much hurry. It's going to take some time, no matter what, for him to come back. Right. So get in the rhythm. Can't afford any silly mistakes. Like just stuff like that. You got to really get a little more in tune with the table to where you're out in the center there and just chipping that four in and coming back up. I'm not saying he should have an error from here, but you never know when you're going to hit the ball hard. Okay, he could cheat it a little bit. Well, it's all about consistency, and Efren Reyes is uh, kind of lazy, so he works real hard on those things, so everything's routine, even though he can make the other balls. And what I noticed, I'd make a hard shot, and then I'd go on holiday, and then I have to make another hard shot two shots later he goes six seven shots but then he has to make one i'm going every two oh, or three right, you right, know? absolutely but that's also using your mind to uh to make the game easier on you right which also at times makes you look at a shot like it's actually tougher than it is so you have to you have to have that fine line of being young when you're down on the ball and being a little older when you're up above the ball mm -hmm. so no good point all right, now here, this has gotten a little funny. He liked to go three rails with inside. He likes shooting that ball that way, but don't catch it heavy on this ball, on this table and let it stall on you. Okay, he went back and forth. That's the way I like playing it. And Billy the Kid retaliates with a game here. He earned that with a real good judgment. Great shot, too. It wasn't just, uh, let me let me use my judgment, and it works. He had to execute it just, just yeah. to a T. Floated that cue ball in there just perfect. Yeah, you can only win one game at a time, so no worries about the score. And the other, the other thing, when you come into this match, you know Jason Shaw is going to play great. You're not even worried about what he does. You expect him to play great. It's what you're going to do when you get your turn. That's why I always tell people about practicing. You know, you'll almost always see the great players always practicing by themselves. Because, I mean, there's a few reasons you get to shoot more. But really, when it's your turn, you just kind of play by yourself when you're playing a rotation pool. Mm -hmm. I mean, you really don't change your decision too often according mm -hmm to your opponent. Yeah. <laughs> Shane is now down on yet another table <laughs> practicing. Uh, JL Chang. Oh, he's going to need one to go. He's going to need a seven ball to go, and this is going to be an illegal break and not what he wanted. He's not going to get this back. He's going to chip this two ball and go around and use the 8-5 as a snooker, I believe. Real easy shot, just lays perfect. You can't hardly dog it. Now you want the two to get up as much as possible. That way the jump shot isn't so available. Oh, he did great. Mm. Yeah, that's lethal. Yeah, that's much, the kick's a little easier getting in between the five, six, which is a little upsetting. Like if he lays him down right there, he's gonna have to go three rails, but the jump is less likely from where he left mm -hmm. him. If he leaves him a little closer behind the eight, well, now the jump becomes a lot more available. And this is super hard to play any shot other than just for your life. You know, you just try to hit it. Hope. Yeah, I don't know. I think he can maybe uh, go in between the five, six. I think I like a medium speed here. Just don't blast. I don't think blasting. When the balls are like that, you got like four or five right there helping you out. You know what I mean? Like, don't try and separate them too much. That's when you sell something out. May have gotten away with it. Uh, it's close. Don't think if he doesn't line up just perfect on this 2 7, he won't shoot it right on in. Like if the cue ball's lined up perfect, if <laughs> yeah. he's like, whoa, yeah. you want to see this one <laughs> yeah. real quick. Yeah. He can cross corner the two, being aggressive and trying to get behind the three if he wants. And if he overcuts it a little bit when he does that, he can get safe pretty easy. Yep. All right, he went for it. He went wide. I yeah. knew he was going for position, too. He's, oh, look at this. Look at this. That is not what Billy Thorpe needs to see. No, and that's why Billy really needs to play flawless. I mean, he can't have hardly any mistakes because there is the luck factor as well. Even, mm -hmm. you know. Yep. 
That's why the leads are so huge. I mean, it takes a lot for opponent to come back. Now this is the type you try to just kick right into the four or right into the side, just trying to hit the good side of it. I don't, I don't like rolling this one as much. I think this is the time to create something, try and hit down on it. Yeah, this is a shot that Jason can cut in. Yeah. Now, is he going into the bad edge of the three? And the four is right across two, so he's not got a clean alley going back and forth. You may see him bank this and hold his ball. If the three passes the nine, you may see him bank at this. I'd rather cut it. He'd rather cut it, but it may call for the bank here. Good call. Um, Good um, call. And once again, he's not going to get terribly punished. It doesn't appear. No, he can't bank it. I don't think he can see enough to bank it. Ooh, this is touchy, I think, Mark. If he can't see much of this ball, he may have to bank this out and just trank a one rail right on the back of the seven with the cue ball. You might be able to kick and stick in behind it and put the two down in the center. I don't know if you... Maybe. He's got to get in deep if he's going to do that. I like that. Oh, he's banking it. He can get at it. Oh, no, he's, he's banking it. Okay, that's rails. good, too. Yeah. That's where I was thinking he could kick it, too, but... Maybe. If you can bank it there, it's better because Ooh. it's more reliable. Yeah, yeah, there might be a hideous little window there. I don't think there is. Is there? I don't he think so. He stopped and looked. It's hard to tell. The three six is funny right there, and it's close. Yeah, he's got can't it. Curve around the edge of the no, six. No, I, yeah. I think he's well. That's what it looked like to me just initially, but the, sometimes the camera will show us a little different view than we really have. Oh, I see. A, He's yeah. got a touchy kick, though, with the four and seven right there. So I think there's room, but the problem is it's, it's so full he has to double kiss it if he goes through him. He's jump kicking here. He's jump, <laughs> jumping over the seven and kicking at the two, and I don't blame him. There's any doubt on going in between that three six, as good as these guys are with the jump cue and kicking. You just got to go for this, I believe. Wow, nice look shot. at the speed he hit it, nice too. Look at this. This is cute. Oh, boy. Oh, wow. I thought he was going to get hooked up on the I thought he point. was, too. I, the, well, the spin on, on a little wetter table, the spin would have grabbed that ball and held it up uh, But this <laughs> dry table. He would have been corner hooked. That would have been the coup de grace. I know it's 7-2, to two, but just a few little things here and there. As great a shot as Jason just made, the, the few mm -hmm. little things are turn, turning around. Yeah, it's very hard to maintain the pace that Jason Shaw come out of the gate with. You have to expect something to go awry. Well, you don't want to go get all the way straight in here, but pretty close. To real, you want to get real full on this four ball coming across. Five's just over the side. As bad as Billy will need to break and run a rack or two after this, he's got to make sure he gets this one, no matter what happens after this one. And he may have to draw back here because he, he got dead straight. And he does he does want to pinch the cue ball back a little bit when he shoots the five to get to the six. Doesn't want to have too thin a cut. Yeah, even if you overdraw it, I think it's better. Because you can go around. If you go the other way, you may have to deal with the eight. Oh, no, he hit that one really on the bad side of what he wanted, I believe. If he's gotten to where he's got to go around now. If he got, falls over flat, like if he underhits this a little bit and falls flat on the rail... Okay. Oh, okay. He could go to that route. That's no problem. Yeah, that was good then. If he could get to that side of the side pocket. Two cushions around just to the center of the table would be great. Oh. Sponsor patch fell off. Man, I, I, I would take that off right now. That's the second time it's fallen off, and it could end up being a foul at some point if you're stretched out over the table and it goes on an object ball. I would certainly do that. We're playing all ball foul, so it doesn't matter what it is that makes a ball move. Other than, you know. Right. An earthquake or something. Well, it's you get my point. Play. I mean, yeah. it's falling off twice. Absolutely.
And pretty good transition from backswing to forswing. <laughs> Billy Thorpe wins two in a row now. Much like Jeremy was saying, things can turn around, particularly if he can get just a little something going from the break where he can neutralize some of uh, Jason's opportunities at the table, make him come and jump kick every time he comes to the table for a little while. Yeah, and he had an illegal break on the last one, so he's going to have to change something there. That's for sure. Can't afford many more of those. No. Billy being one of the, I believe, the last two Americans uh, on the winter side. Uh, let's see. No, he's the only American left in the winter side. No, I think Corey's playing Kashi. Oh, Corey, that's Kashi right. right now. My bad. Corey's yeah. my dark, dark horse to win the tournament. And I, you can't call him a dark horse. He's a former U.S. Open champion. But yeah. somebody you might consider, uh, you know, yeah, uh, right. you know, 10 or 15 spots down the sheet if you're filling out, you know, the odds to win the tournament. So Legal break. Wing ball went in the corner. And is, is the this one, one going to do anything uh, for him? It doesn't appear so. Now, this is a shot to where if you're feeling good, you just shoot through the one and plant them and roll the cue ball on the back of the five. You want to shoot it when you have a little more cover, but I mean, where else are you going? What are you going to roll out to? You can't roll out, really. Not to anything you're going to get back that's better. It's laying perfect. Mm -hmm. though. I mean, this is one you yeah. miss hit, you give up a cut shot on the one. But I'll tell you what, I like to roll the cue ball down here on the eight. And then hope that he gives it back and then go rail first right before the side and chip the one ball down on the five. Yeah, but you're not going to get away with much there as far as if you give him a look, he's going to put you behind the nine six here. I really think he can roll through. Oh, that's okay because this gives you a little more cover. And if you hit it well, you could get the seven. That was a, I that was like a the thinking there. Good decision. He's going to try and fall behind the eight, and this isn't easy. This is what you call a soft safety with a little jelly. Like uh, you're putting the one on the back rail and not leaving the guy anything offensive. But if you hit it really well, you might pin him behind the eight. Mm. Nice effort. Good call by you, Jeremy. B Billy's in a touchy spot here. He's got to be real careful what he's doing here. Doesn't have much as far as a hook. He can't hit the right side of the one. I don't think he can afford to go that way. This is touchy. He did go that way. He was trying to use the six and all that, and this isn't the shot he wanted to leave Jason Shaw. This is like motivation. Yeah. No, that, that shot plays well at the uh, legal level, but that doesn't do well here at the U.S. Open level. No, and he was in a funny spot. That's why you saw him trying to move the ball down the table yeah. and use two other balls to cover the one up. It wasn't easy. I thought he might kick behind the one on that last one. Wow, what a clean strike that was. <laughs> That's the problem right there. You yeah, just... just that center, just a little bit below center, but he's still putting a little draw on the ball, but just mainly, I mean, it's just, he never overhits it. Okay, he's got to pay attention here. Kind of punched that one. It doesn't really matter the angle, because if he gets straight to five to six, everything's there. He can come around if he falls behind it. This is the one I wouldn't want to get straight in on, though. No. And he kind of shot that a little bit hurried, but now he can repent in leisure. And he, you'll watch him. He'll pinch the cue ball off the rail here when he draws it back, see, or gets it out. He wants to make <laughs> sure he's off the rail. If right. He's not too unhappy with anything else. And we oftentimes joke that if the object ball and the cue ball are on the same table, that's good position for Jason Shaw. Well, there were some players years ago that didn't, like C.J. Wiley, I might say, when he was playing his best position, he just wanted an angle. He, I know tournaments wasn't always his best mm -hmm. game as far as C.J., but action matches, he was incredible. Great strike there. <laughs> A little extra giddy up. And then just making sure he gets to this end rail and avoiding that scratch. <laughs> Jason. This will not even be a practice swing, hardly. And there it is. That is an eighth win. Eight three. Things are progressing nicely for him. Playing a 937 clip. Billy Thorpe's at 800. You know, Jeremy, you played a heck of a match the other night against uh, Copen Chung over here. I watched that. It was late at night, as I recall. Uh, fairly, yeah. Uh, fairly late. 
Yep. It was a winter side match. 10 10, wasn't it? Yeah, Hill yeah. Hill, yeah. Hill Hill, the wrong side of Hill Hill, but that's okay. Hey, you're playing yeah. a guy that's got a great chance to win this. Yeah, uh, well, I'm. I like, I like, uh, if I'm playing, I like my chances in this, these conditions where you generally most players are going to get to shoot some, you know what I mean? The, and mm -hmm. there's some different situations and stuff like that. But he played great. He made a great one ball shot, a jump shot on the hill. Um, you know, your shot where you could have made the nine, where you banked at the nine and saved. I love well, that I was, shot. I was a dead man kind of where I was, so. There we go. Four ball on the wing. He got it. Didn't go in direct, but got kissed in. The one found the side pocket. Five ball. Now the six is going to cover the two up just enough. <laughs> you can't even get at the cross corner, I don't believe. Yeah, Billy's got to be delighted that that six ball got in the play here, no matter okay. what happens. Okay, and here you roll out to where the guy can't get at the rail first, to where he can get to the rail before the two, where he comes across the left side rail, chipping the two on the right side and going a couple rails behind the three and back down by the seven. You see what I'm saying? Uh, could you give us the overhead if we can get that? That yeah, would be great. I then think that's Jeremy where... could kind of show it. Hopefully we didn't get it. So. Okay, he's looks like he's rolling out. Okay, he's got to be careful here. He's put himself in a situation. He'll get it back, and he won't like it maybe. Oof, I don't know here. I might have to get this one back. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know. Billy may bank at this. Now, I'm, I was looking at it on the monitor, and I didn't know if he could get the cue ball out of the way. Because the threes there, a lot of these time, this time, these types of shots are illusions. Sometimes you think you can get the ball out of the way of the kiss, but you can't. And he missed it. I can't blame him for shooting at it unless he had a pretty good clue that the three was going to come all the way back down and not really get a shot. To see that long distance on the three, most likely it looks like. <laughs> and he'll just pull this to the side rail and back out, I believe. Could go forward. But... This is just mid range for Jason Shaw. <laughs> you know, everybody else is long range. Creates a lot of power. And he could go forward. You'll see guys these days, especially the drier conditions, you can go forward so easy with just straight top. But he's going to draw this. Yeah. And again, the off angleness doesn't bother him at all on this six. He'll just draw this again. Doesn't want to overhit it and bring this lower right quarter into play, though. Wow, what a great shot. It was such control. He's so smooth on that transition. Most guys have to kind of muscle up, and that's where it gets a little... Stilted the jerky. Yeah, that's why I say clean strikes on the cue ball. He really hits it cleanly. You can hear it. Real crisp hits. You know, what what strength does for you is it allows you to hit the micro dot on the cue ball with power. Most people they have to jerk a little bit and it gets away from the micro dot, and that's when you lose accuracy at range. Yeah, and it's easy to like Mark had talked about earlier, that quick transition is the in my opinion the, the major mistake by all levels. And just losing your timing. Cruising along here. A missed bank shot by Billy Thorpe from Jason's push out. So now Jason's won a couple games from his push outs. Hard to do because you're the underdog when you push out. Yeah, my gut feeling, uh, Billy's going to be lucky to get another shot. Uh, you kind of think you normally get mm -hmm. your opportunities even down 9-3, to three, but he's had some. He's had a few. He hadn't had a lot. and uh, He's definitely... Shouldn't be too upset other than the score. You know, he's got to keep his his, uh, his focus. But just my gut feeling of watching a lot of pool, I just kind of think J Jason's going to break and get an opportunity to maybe end this in two racks. Been really successful in the break. Tough to stop him. One ball found the side, four ball in the corner. Here comes the two. The three's tied up. That's the one saving grace, temporarily anyway, for yeah. Billy Thorpe. 
Well, that's the track on the two ball when the rack's really coming apart how you want it with this cut break. The two goes three rails towards the center, towards that side pocket, towards that side of, ta side of the table. Now, what's he looking at here? It's He's powering up with left English coming around three rails. <laughs> oh, look at this. He may get there anyway. He may get uh, there anyway. Too funny. He went for a circus shot. He may cut this in the side, I'm telling you. Just hit it with a high ball and go right into the edge of the... He may not even catch the edge of the nine. And that's a nice camera work right there. You can really see what he oh, has. Oh, goes. Yeah. I wouldn't doubt he's shooting this with just a straight high ball. I'd be unlucky to scratch it, looks like, from there. He's he's really eyeing it up. I like it, actually. I, well, I mean, if, yeah, if, he, if you were a wagering man, I'd bet you a soda right here. I, I, I think he's going to make it. Of course, I like betting on all the great players when they're shooting at their hole. Ooh. <laughs> Jake said, the look on his face like, how did I miss a ball here? What's going on? He's that's, mad. Don't worry. That's weird. Not, mad might not be the word, but disappointed he's not for happy, sure. That's no. for sure. <laughs> and that popped a really nice opening here for Billy Thorpe. Again, like Mark had talked about, he's got to really make sure he's doing everything right in all these situations. He can't afford any mistakes. Probably going to need a little bit of luck off the break at times, but definitely can't afford any mistakes. I'm glad he's taking some time here because with the nine being in, in play where it's at, uh, getting on the eight, you've got to make sure what you're doing here. You don't want to get too, too thin on the seven. You definitely don't want to get really straight. Too thin is uh, makes this a little tricky now. Now I think he's, to guarantee everything go right, is he's got to hit this with inside English and go three rails around the eight. He's going to catch the eight. Now we'll see if the angle is okay. A little funny. I think he's full enough to draw the short side, though, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. The only thing was that, that he, he made the mistake, you know, with a little bit of an errant position play getting to the seven. That he had an umpteen amount of table to get to but overran the position just uh, a little bit careless. Good shot there. Yeah, nice yeah. recovery. Good job, Billy. And Billy's going to have to realize that's part of my strength, too, is getting down and recovering well and knocking in the ball, them balls whenever I'm a little out of line. So oh, he made two. He okay. made two. Yeah, that's Thank what I was goodness, trying to Thank goodness, because only one at. ball went past, but okay. I mean, he's going to have to show a little bit of a trick shot if he's going to be offensive here, cutting the two on the side and trying to develop on this three ball in the lower left-hand corner. I, I like being offensive, though. He can't get to the end rail, can he? He's got to go to the side rail. If he here. goes soft, he might just, nope. Oh, what oh, a nice, nice shot. shot. What really a nice, nice. shot. It needs it to go, though, because you'll notice the fours down here with it. He doesn't need to be thin on this three, and he's stretched as well. So this is going to be funny. This is where the uh, name tag on his shirt <laughs> it would be scary for me. Yeah, this is I this would... is touchy. With the, he's going to have to get the bridge. <laughs> no, that will eliminate one of the name tags falling off on a ball anyway. Well, he's going to have to hit this in awfully softly. You going to go? Yeah. Just enough. Great shot. shot. Yeah, it really was. 
And again, he needs to pay attention. Again, I'd probably come up the right side of the table with a little high left English, or yeah, high left English. He could come back down for the side, but doesn't want to fall on the rail a little off angle in that side pocket. You just drift down to the right side of the table. It's a pretty easy shot. You just float right into position. A little angle on the six isn't a problem. Oh, he went that way. Okay. He made sure he got off the rail at least. Because he did get that little bit of a funny angle. Mm hmm Yeah, this plays a lot better from when you bridge or cue out here off the rail anyway. Again, falling over here on this rail, he's got to be careful. I think he can hit this with a high right ball and go by the eight, not worry about the scratch at all, and just come up for the eight. He's to hit it. Nice touch. Three rails around, cruising into optimum position here. Nice break and run out, much needed. Billy Thorpe now has five. Jason Shaw, nine. Number 14 goes to Billy Thorpe. Billy the Kid showing some fight here, Jeremy. Oh, absolutely. Nine to five. That's definitely striking distance. I think Jason was down 10 to six earlier in the tournament. Came back and won a match, Hill Hill. True story. Against Big Co. Yeah, we had several of those last year, big comebacks. We've had some this year as well. Jeremy, um, uh, Jason did the same thing to Big Co on this table last year, too. Yeah. Oh, there's a look at the rack track. You can see Shaw won the first game, Billy won the next one, then Shaw rattled off six in a row. And now they've been trading twos to get to this point. And uh, he's had one illegal break, and he's threatened a couple other times. He really needs to shore that up. Hmm. Wing ball went in. Where's the one? Looks like it's going to work out. It did. Well, well, it didn't work out oh, too much I'm sorry. of a shot. <laughs> yeah, but, he, was but it, <laughs> there was no doubt that it was a legal break. That's for sure. Now, can he get to the rail first behind the nine? He could. There's a lot of cover shooting at that shot, and, dri and you can drift over for, for position as well. I don't think he can get to the rail early enough to make the one. I think no? he can get okay. in between there. I was thinking he might be able to chip it. Yeah, if he could, that'd be great. Like you're saying, it's almost a free shot. No. I guess he's left him to where there's only a chip on the one going behind the five, which is real dicey. Real dicey. Even as accurate as Jason is, I would still give this back. Well, he must see something he likes. He must be able to bank this three rails around. Yeah, that's the one that I can't... Uh, Billy should have been real aware of that. Just like last night in the Carlo Beato match and Billy Thorpe match on the hill, Carlo rolled out and left Billy off the rail, mm -hmm. which was a huge mistake under the circumstances. And I think Billy did the same mis mistake here because Billy was thinking the chip shot. Mm -hmm. He certainly wouldn't roll out to that little three rail duck, you know, knocking the ball around. So a little bit of a mental error. Okay, he's going to have to hope this doesn't find a pocket. I think it's going to. Oh, it definitely, it definitely does. It does go. He needs that to go, though. Doesn't need to be over the seven. Okay, now he's going to be fine. He'll just pull it over and chip the three in from long distance. Won't take any chances on getting any closer to the three here, right, Mark? No. I, I mean, he, I wouldn't either. I wouldn't, yeah. You know, this is the, it, it's effortless for him. And just knock the ball in. And particularly once the cue ball leaves the cushion, it doesn't matter. He he can make it. So He can make it when it's on the cushion, but it just plays so much more comfortably for him when it's off the cushion. He doesn't flutter the ball in either. It goes in clean. 
Um, but even when he moves it along, uh, you know, moves the ball, you know, right there, what was that, 9 feet, about 13 feet, you'll notice he doesn't kill it. You know, it's just it's got so much power with just using that great timing. You'll notice when his ball comes into position the last foot, it almost looks the same every mm -hmm. time, just the way mm -hmm. it drifts into position. It's Yeah, Efren's the same way. He doesn't have the power of Jason Shaw, but he barely hits it. It just keeps going and going and going. And yeah, that's just like, in my opinion, like throwing a baseball. It's just timing is all it is. You'll see a lot of little guys that can throw it a long ways, a lot of different shapes in our games that create a lot of power. Yeah. Yeah, speaking of baseball, Pedro Martinez and Billy Whitener come to mind. They were all five foot ten. Could throw a hundred. And Jason Shaw puts himself on the hill. He's leading ten five. Speaking of baseball, my Houston Astros, which yeah. I love more than anything in the world, are in the World Series. Hmm. I know uh Yeah, we'll have the break performance average here with Shaw uh, with ten, uh, nine total breaks, eight, eight successful, meaning a ball and a break with no illegal breaks. Uh, Thorpe uh, with five t total breaks of six, uh, six successful breaks, uh, no scratches on the breaks breaks by either player. So Billy, ironically, batting a thousand on the break, but uh, now trailing ten to six or ten to five, excuse me. You know, it's remarkable too with these break rules that. Uh there's only been one dry break out, yeah. of, the, out of that, that abundance of breaking. Well, you know, I think the TV table, a little bit, the dryness helps mm -hmm. that situation out a little bit. Um, I think the tables and balls are a little cleaner on the TV table than the exterior, too. Oh, that, absolutely. I thought they looked a little cloudy. No doubt. No doubt. Uh, the one ball found the side. Okay. Is he going to get another one passed, though? Yes, the six got passed, and he got a shot. So. And he got a chip right at the last instant there to get the cue ball out where it's free. He's going to cut this in and come one rail right at the five. Maybe catching the second rail before the side, but I don't think you're going to see him pass this up. I know it's risky. Mm -hmm. but I think he's going to play at two cushions. I think he's going to introduce just a little bit of right-hand spin and just and play just to get the cue ball. Even more. I do. I think he's going to come That's out. That's okay. Yeah. I, I, okay, he's ducking, it looks he's, like. Yeah. He's putting the two behind the seven. Oh, he's That's not giving little, any air whatsoever. A little short, though. But still, you know, he's going to make him earn every opportunity. He's not giving him one here. Absolutely. And that's the professional side more than, like, uh, you know, one pocket. A lot of people think, well, I need one. I can shoot anything. Well, that's d the difference. They got the professionals, the ones that really learn anything can happen from any moment. Realize mm -hmm. even with a 10 to 5 lead in this spot, I'm not going to give anything right, away. Right. What a great shot that was. And that's what I thought, he, that, that he would really be taking the worst of this here, leaving leaving uh, Billy a little edge on yeah. that, too. Yep. A lot of good things can happen if he hits it, I'll tell you that, though, with the 3-5 and the 8-4 there. Is he close enough to it to where he can produce a shot on the 3, drawn into the 5, maybe, or does he have to go into the 3-ball? Looks like he has to go into it. Oh, he's banking it. I can't. This is. Uh, I think this is. Um, I don't like this shot as much. It, it offers a little cover, but. Oh, he hit it great. Wow. wow. <laughs> Never mind. Wow. He. Well, he just bet they bet that rack on that well, shot. Well, I'll tell you what. He did differently. I said it offers a little more cover, but he shot it. And said, heck with the cover. I'm going to mm -hmm. knock it in. And that makes a heck of a lot of difference when you come to shooting it. Mm -hmm. I don't. I didn't like him just kind of slow rolling it over there and maybe getting a hook or, mm -hmm. you know, and all mm -hmm. that. But mm -hmm. once he committed now, that's mm -hmm. a different story. So. Yeah. And when you bank like Billy Thorpe, why not? That's the other thing. How many good chances are you going to get against Jason? So you can't fool around. I mean, like you said, a lot of good things happen when he kicks and hits it. Probably 20% of the time it ends up being tough. Yeah, well, that you'll notice the, the big percentage you have to look at when it comes to that kicking is when you got eight or nine balls on the table and you got you start talking about the professionals kicking, they're going to have a lot of great things happen right. because there's so much variables on the table, so many variables yep. on the table. So, Yep, we call it a backdoor safety. Wasn't intended, it just happens.
Okay, this, he's got to where he's probably got to just come straight across two rails rather than pulling this out with low. Or he could just check it at one rail and killing it. That's all right, too. Like so. Well, you can see how Billy got here. He's playing good, no doubt about it. 21 years old. Mm -hmm. yeah, he's playing great. Huh? Yeah. There's no fluke in this this event here. As far as um, you just just don't see it. I mean, it's not just the guys that have won it, but just the list of guys on down. You know, first through whatever you might say, top 16s, mm -hmm. top 20. I mean, you just right. you're gonna see not only big names, but guys that were playing great at the t at the time. As you know. Even today, I was asked, could you name five guys that could win this? I couldn't even single it down to just five guys. You five? Know? Yeah. I mean, there's no, 24 I'm, left. I, say. I know, but I mean, I, All 24. I believe, believe at the start of the tournament, I got to believe there's like... Uh, 60 or 80. Somewhere around the number of 50 to 60, I'm guessing, maybe more. You know, and that's without, you know, I'm not as savvy as far as knowing all the foreigners like I used to be. I don't mm -hmm. get out like that as much, so. This looks like a legal break. Now, is he going to get a shot? He's got a lot of traffic to play a snooker, though, so he can see a piece of this, too. You're going to see. Yeah, that's good camera work there. You can really see. Yeah, and this is pretty easy. Now you just pick out this back rail where you get a couple balls to, to use the snooker. You know, maybe that'd be the four, six, nine, where you're chipping the two down to your. This is where you really need to be specific on where you're putting the cue ball. A little gap can really cost you, or if you leak out for a jump shot, it can really cost you. He's left them straight in or real close to it. Jumping? Yeah. And that was, I believe that's a little bit of an error. Not If he only has to jump over an edge of this four, that's a little bit of an error by, by Billy. Maybe I'm a little harder on the stats myself, but I think at this level, you got to really lay the cue mm -hmm. ball down behind the seven and the nine. And the luck factor as well, just like so. I don't think he's going to get a piece of this. This is actually a worse spot than he was in for Billy's design. Real it's, bad. He's going to have to kick to the bottom rail with spin. Yeah, with English, and that diminishes uh, some of the things you can do with the cue ball. Uh, he just wants a real full hit there and just let the chips fall where they may. That's all you can do. Just don't give up ball in hand. Could warp it right in the corner. I don't like kicking like a safety speed here. I like putting a little speed on this one. He's left him tough. This isn't easy. You're going to see Billy attack for sure. He's cutting this ball in. Going four rails right around the four. I don't think he's killing it. Got to watch out. Is that too hard? I think it's just about right. Okay. Nice shot. Yeah, it was. Still not out of the woods. He's got to... Gonna play for the five in the lower right hand corner, I believe. Uh, bringing the cue ball two rails around the six. Goes so in the side then. Ball too far behind it. I guess it does. Just follow forward. Put a little more on it. That way you get away from the nine ball. You don't want to be messing with the nine. Like a lot of speed, but it's going yeah. to end up being perfect. A little closer to his work than he probably intended, right. but still, nevertheless, a nice line he had on the cue ball. I always say this, perfect position and proper position is two different things. This is perfect, but it's too risky. Proper is another foot or two away. Yeah, he just wasn't but an ounce of a swing on the cue from being in trouble. Very nice run out, however. <laughs> As well as Jason's played, here's Billy. Only three games back, 10-7. Yeah, you, you beat me to the punch. I was going to bring that up, that what feels like a landslide is just uh, really just a strike, a little bit of luck, getting a shot off the break, and yeah. uh, 
Very much striking distance for Billy Thorpe. That, now shooting an 870. That's a big figure for how tough it's been to, to get to that point. Yeah, well, that reflects he had some early mistakes, but really shorted up here the last uh, 30 minutes to 30 to 40 minutes. Yeah, when he fell way behind, he was down around 800. Well, he lost six in a row at one time after... Uh, yeah, he didn't he have a whole lot of say in those games, though. <laughs> no, but he missed a four ball, and he, yeah. he, he had a couple of things. But, uh, yeah, Jason really, I mean, the, the, couples, the, yeah, the couple of snookers that Billy played great shots, and Bill, Jason kicked him in. So, I mean, it wasn't like Billy's got right. any reason to hang his head. He's still in the match here. Five ball on the wing, and then the bottom yeah, of the corner the one pocket. one ball's dressing up the two straight in. Oh, look at oh, this. Look at this. Oh, man. I would remember the speed he put on that one because the speed on this cut break makes all the difference on how mm -hmm. they spread. When you over hit them, they kind of bounce out of the rack and they don't really travel that far. Yeah. Good point. And he's got a perfect angle here. He's just got to punch up about a foot left of the pink or he's going to go forward. I guess he doesn't have much angle. I thought he had a little bit of an angle. Okay, now this is the little bit of a tester when it comes to this rack. Make a clear-cut decision. Do I just chip it in for the corner or come down for the four on the side? Oh, he hit it hard. I was really shocked there. Great shot, though. I was a little shocked him going around them balls like that. But you just. Top spin up to the center of the table here. Mm, yeah, that's good. He had economy of travel. It's falling on the right angle just to come back out to the center of the table. And a great break and run out here before him. And there it is, 10-8. Billy Thorpe on the comeback trail. Now playing 885. 8 850 is professional level, 900 world class. Billy approaching 900. 931 for Shaw, you rarely lose playing a 930. There's the rack track, Billy's won the last three in a row. And seven out of 10. After losing six in a row from games three through eight. Like I said, I'd really uh, pay attention to that last speed on that last one. We'll yeah. see. He made, yeah. th he made three, and really the, the balls traveled all over the table with no problems. I mean, no no collisions. No, There was no, oh, is he going to make a legal break? Mm-hmm. Eight ball on the wing this time. Oh, the cue uh, ball. Well, that's too bad because he made the made the one ball, he made the eight ball, and the rack was pretty open. I don't know if he would have had a good shot. but Well, the two's over the spot, so besides being pinned behind a ball, there was a good chance of it. But mm -hmm. that was the reason uh, as far as the lead. Those leads are so huge as far as trying to come back because everyone knows there's the element of some type of scratch you don't normally have because we're having to cut them. All right. So, Jason Shell now just five balls away from advancing to the final four, a place he was here last year, same position. What a great spot. Final four, and you have to be beaten twice to get you out of advancing higher. And just a couple draw strokes away from a, what's probably going to be an easy nine ball. <laughs> Jay-Z, he doesn't want to follow that seven. And he had a couple already this match. Now he's gotten a little straighter on this. So is he going to go with a little yeah, top inside, I'm sure? Yeah. Just nice and smooth. But watch, he won't crush it. A lot of people overhit this. He gets it going nice and smooth, and it rolls out. And keeps going and going and going. Just like you were saying. Just floats it in there. Match ball, Jason Shaw. He will be advancing. He's quite delighted. <laughs> uh, 
Well, uh, very entertaining pool, Jeremy. Uh, do you have any thoughts on the turning point or any any final thoughts regarding well, I, this match? I think just like I'd opened with as far as the guy, you know, Billy had a shot the opening game, missed a tough shot. Jason got an easy look, a couple more easy looks. Uh, got things going with the break and really was out of Billy's hands. Billy got had some great opportunities at the end and took full advantage of them with a bad, unlucky scratch. But right, we certainly know Jason Shaw isn't done, but ladies and gentlemen, neither is Billy Thorpe. Right. Well, this has been the AccuStats presentation of World Class Pool. Thank you from Jeremy Jones and myself. That's our time for this time. Until next time, good night.